My name is Thomas Kamps. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Han Weaver. And I would like to start with a pro provoking statement. We think, I think, that time's up for monolithic software solutions. So SAP, SAP has to be careful in the future. Why do I think so? Because dynamic data linking enables the change. What is this change? Where is this change coming from? Well, imagine you were an engineer at a car manufacturer and you had to <coughs> change the middle console of a vehicle within only one week time. This is a very challenging task. So, in fact, there's a change. This change invokes a lot of work orders and so you're the engineer at the end of the line and you ask yourself questions such as, what were the requirements? Who designed the assembly? Where is it built in? To whom delivered? So you pick up the phone, try to get these questions answered. You consult different applications, but you're confronted with a heterogeneous, disconnected data world because even this big SAP is not able to cover all the aspects that a large company, even a medium-sized company has. So, as a result, this leads to a very bad ratio between administrative overhead and productive work share at, uh, for the engineer in manufacturing companies. And this, in turn, leads to start of production that might be delayed, which is really costly for the automotive companies. And customer satisfaction might be suffering other shortcomings, other problems of this kind appear. But this is not only a problem of the engineering world or the manufacturing world. You can find this kind of pattern in other industries as well. So Conweaver considers diversity as given. It's a good thing. People work in their work processes. The only thing that they need is the data for their task. So what you need to do is actually to connect these data, and we can do that automatically. We can connect automatically the data of different applications in a very short time so that business objects of these different applications are connected. And in this way, we guarantee trans transparency and interoperability between the different systems. And this means we can store this semantic network as a digital brain in Sapana. What does that mean? It combines on the one side speed and on the other side intelligence. And this is needed for fast paced enterprises of today. And then think of this guy here. He's sitting in front of his PDM, SAP PDM system. But there's lots of other systems around there, third party systems. Consider this guy having these questions, and he can get these questions answered in his world, in his context. He doesn't need to leave the system, and SAP is, of course, happy. Because we can keep the customers, the users, in this world. So let's have a look. Oh, there's one slide missing. Um, can you just, uh, OK, that's it. Uh, just uh, to explain you a little bit more uh, with the live system, here you see a semantic network that only shows a small portion of the engineering, wor world, engineering world of a large automotive customer, or at least similar data. What you see here is on the left side, you see objects such as persons, change objects, uh, bill of material entries, bill of material for those who don't know, the list of components of which a car is composed of. Models, um, virtual vehicles and so on. And these objects actually are objects which are originally stored in the different applications. Here in this case five applications. What we, could, what, what, what we have done is automatically connecting these. So in the case that there is a change which is invoked by this person this change, for instance, uh, actually changes the middle console. This is the change which invokes work orders. And there is a 
bill of material entry, which represents this um, <coughs> uh, middle console, there's also uh, a corresponding item in the geometry world. So there are different worlds which we have connected. So once you change that, then this guy here, who is responsible for this virtual car, needs to be informed. And before we did that, for our customer, these are not the real data, but our customer is General Motors. Before they could do that, they had to go through three weeks' time collecting, searching data. And now they can do it by just clicking or by push services. So this is actually the impact. Let me go back to the, uh, the presentation, please. Thank you. So the customer benefits that we can achieve is we provide transparency through dynamic data linking instead of very laborious and time-consuming data integration projects because we have these dynamic linking. We can even do that without any organizational changes. So we can introduce the solution within weeks. And <clears throat> we have proven that. We can even reduce process complexity because the disconnected applications are now mystically connected. And uh, we can even support IT migration processes because this network, for instance, in our case of our customer Airbus, covers the different worlds. And if you change something under this umbrella, as they say, then the user will not take any notice of that. And so you can change underneath and change the, your IT landscape without having any downtimes. We can even provide more um, effective business processes because we get the data from any remote place in the world. If there's a change, you have it immediately because the network is the brain that connects it. <clears throat> so in this case of GM, for instance, we connected 16 data systems in the engineering world. We delivered the first pilot within six weeks, the live system within four months with only a couple of people. And so Opel, our entry point to GM, was the winner of um, an innovation award, which was worldwide, among 80 IT innovation projects. And it was really great, because we won the license. And so they believe in that. They believe in us. And whenever we see users' comments, they find it really great. Um, what you can show is that actually this very bad ratio of administrative overhead towards productive work share, we could turn it around. And this is really a big issue. So the business case, actually, that we see is potentially all the sub-customers are customers of Conweaver as well because they face similar problems. If they are large or if they are medium-sized companies, we also have medium-sized companies. So if our customers are willing to pay license fees in the order of several hundred thousand of euros for only one application, if we can realize just 20% of the sub-customers paying only 20% of what we have in this number over, then this is a real big number. So then maybe this is a very traditional, um, say, uh, a business like SAP does for 45 years. But I think it's very, very interesting. So what are we waiting for? <clears throat>